we, coming up, do the twist. We'll explain what that is in just a moment. Fire it up. <laughs> From the birthplace of American barbecue, the low country of South Carolina, it's great TV time. It's Bill West, and with me, as usual, Jack Wayborn, three-time South Carolina state champion. Uh, what are you, the whole hog champion? 2011 right national whole hog champ, out of the uh -huh. best of the best, Wake Cross, Georgia, Mike's Catering. What an event that was. We had a blast. Uh, kicking things off, Couldn't remember, have been we love, we're getting a ton of uh, great plates in. We'll get to some of those in just we a are. minute. Keep them coming. You want to just send email, you can do it to Bill at greattv.com or jack at greattv.com. That's me. And the uh, easiest way is just to upload your pictures yeah. at greattv.com. And we love to see them. All right, our first letter here today uh, comes from Chuck Ripple. Hello, Chuck. And he writes, you guys have a great program. Uh, Thanks. Don't miss a new episode. First, a meat question for Jack. What is a steamship round of beef? What cut does that come from? Uh, they are very large and appear boneless. They are uh, very large. They are boneless and they are excellent. Steamship round of beef bill is actually the inside round. Now, I've steamship round is kind of like one of those things that you can pretty much use any kind of round that you want. Round is a uh, cow backside. It's a uh, cow butt mm -hmm. and um, back um, what would back be the leg. Ham? Cow ham, if yeah. that's what you want to say. But there is, you know, a, a full round has the inside round, the the uh, eye of the round, and then it has the bottom round, um, naturally. Inside round is what a meat cutter cuts London broil out of. Uh, bottom round, usually, um, they'll cut a bottom round roast. Um, and then, of course, eye round, you see the eye round roast. The eye round is the tenderest part of the round and is the most expensive when you see it. Like I said, the inside round, the, the butchers usually peel that off of the whole round and they use that as London broil. They'll cut it thick. You know, you've seen London broil. It's usually mm -hmm. cut pretty thick. And it is one piece and it is boneless. Um, it, it's a great cut. We cooked some this weekend for the big party that we catered uh, out at the uh, out in Mount Pleasant. Uh, we cooked seven of them um, as a, as a um, trick, if you want to call it that. We didn't cook them fast. We cooked them fairly low and slow. Oh. And we just kind of let them go until they got to be about a uh, 125, 130 degrees internal. Get a nice medium rare uh, cut. We cut them thin because London bowl has to be cut thin for it to be tender. If you cut them thick, they're going to be a little chew chewy. But you cut that down thin just like you do with London bowl, and it is excellent. And you will fool your people, I guarantee you, to believe that you cook them prime rib. Wow. Very good. And it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Inside round, a whole inside round is a big piece of meat. All right. Probably our, goes 12 pounds, 15 pounds. Gadget this week. Gadget. Have any idea what this would be? Um, I would say this is probably a core of some kind. Um, an apple core, I'm guessing, Bill. Is that exactly what it is? That's probably where it was inspired was, was by. was inspired by. But as you can see. We're going to do some peppers, huh? What I got was, uh, I got, actually, this is one of my Christmas gifts for a gadget. And that, I'm just realizing World Market and all the cool uh, cooking stuff they have. Oh, World Market does have some great stuff. Uh, good barbecue stuff. And this is, was one of the gifts. It is, is there a World Market on this side? Horror. And it came actually with a uh, with that uh, with the deal oh right here. cool. That's got the uh, the little tray. Huh? Chili pepper rack. Chili pepper rack. So um, it's a nice extremely thing. nice knife. This is uh, almost uh, ceramic looking, but. As sharp as it can be. So, so give it a shot and see if you think you uh, like cut how Cut the works. top off the jalapeno. I should be wearing gloves. I'm going to regret not putting gloves on before I did this. Because, by golly. Uh-oh. And while you're doing that, I'll show you. Yeah, it's really twisted. And I did a couple before the show. And it worked out really good. Oh, look at that. Comes right out. The, uh, the hot part of the jalapeno gang is in the seeds and the... And these uh, ribs on the inside right here, uh, that's that takes, once you take the seeds and that, those ribs out right there, um, that's when things start getting, uh, you start taking the heat out of them. And as you cook it, this thing will sweeten up. 
if you want a nice little trick as far as it goes, um, take a little bit of, of fat of some kind. I like to use lard or bacon grease or something like that and rub that around the outside of your pepper and that'll take a little bit of the heat off the pepper as well uh, for some reason. It works. I, I couldn't tell you exactly what the chemical reaction is uh, and you know I'm kind of a food scientist, Bill, but I really don't know the answer to that one and why and it so works. So when you cook it, you get something like this. Oh, well, that looks good on too. On that little cooker. Look at that. Well, these things come right it's out. Not I too really, hot. I really like this. This is nice. Sometimes when I say I really like that, they show up on my Christmas list too. I wouldn't mind having something like this. That'd be nice. Ouch. And then I just put a little piece of cheese in there. And you take this and cut a little of this, a little bit of this right here. Jam it down under the pepper. Just like that. Sometimes uh, you'll see fellows take these and wrap them in bacon. And it makes a good little thing. Pop it in a little tray like that and away you go. There you go. That Simple is effect. your corer. Corer. -er. A very nice knife that uh, looks like it might come out of William Sonoma. And uh, the peppers and the hot peppers. Where's it? Oh, this is mine right here. Ooh, Good luck. It's kind of hot. It's kind of hot? Mm hmm. Well, if we had beer at the beginning of the show, we wouldn't be having the, these worries. Oh, that we're sharp. Yours is right there. Uh oh, mine's the Sam Adams today? Uh, yeah. And while you're opening that, let's get to a great plate. Actually, we got a bunch of good ones. They give, I me, a, they give me a beer without an opener, too. Nice guys I work with. Isn't Where the handlers at? No. Where are the handlers at? Beer no opener. You're going to make me do this the old way, aren't you? The old fashioned way. While you figure that out, Eddie Turner in uh, Lawndale, North Carolina. You guys think I'm an amateur at this, but I'm not. Take a look at this beef brisket marinated in Worcestershire with a little salt, pepper, and garlic. Smoked for 14 hours on the Traeger using hickory and wood pellets. And you got the beer open? I got the beer open finally. Look at I'd that. use my cigarette lighter. It was wonderful. Nice looking brisket there. That is a beautiful looking brisket. Look at that thing. Lawndale, yeah, North Carolina. I'll tell you what, I'll take a piece of that. No, time, no, no deal. Let's get it. Next one up, Brett Curry. He sent over this picture. Calgary Hot Wings. Mm. Recipe by Stephen Reichland, adapted what? by me at Full Puku Barbecue. I wonder what makes them Calgary. Hmm. Calgary oh, Hot Wings. Not bad, Stephen. The pepper's I'm, good, Bill. I'm burning up a little bit, speaking of hot wings. Uh, thanks, Brett Curry. Send in all your great plates. We love to get them. One last thing. We got our secret ingredient. Secret ingredient today is? Well, I, I had heard it called sour salt or citric, or is that citric? Uh... You uh, you asked me to pick up citric acid. Okay. And you can pick up citric acid in your store as citric acid. It's just generic citric acid on a label. Um, more readily available, Bill, um, during canning season because that's when you're more doing the peaches and the apples and so on and so forth when you're putting them up. But citric acid, believe it or not, is also available under the Fruit Fresh label. Okay. Now, Fruit Fresh is a combination of um, dextrose, uh, ascorbic acid, and citric acid. But most of this, I would say most of it, what's in there is um, citric acid and it is a um, used as a preservative. You can sprinkle it on just about anything you want to sprinkle on to keep it from turning dark. Um, you got uh, apples, peaches, um, I'm sure avocados. I think there's a yeah. picture of an avocado on yep. there. Um, anything that you don't want to turn dark, it acts as a preservative. Uh, many, 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 many Carmage chefs use citric acid and fruit fresh to their advantage because you certainly don't want to make a swan of an apple or something like that in the middle of your party. It turns brown because the air gets to it and makes it look like, uh, you know, it's not as fresh as it should be. That's why it's called fruit fresh. Um, I would imagine they probably took citric acid, uh, put a nice little uh, label on it that said fruit fresh and remarketed it. Uh, citric acid is about 25 cents for a jar like that, where that's, that's right about $4 for that. Oh, really? So, uh, you know, go out and get yourself some citric acid. I, I believe granulated uh, citrus is a, about the same thing. Um, the difference is probably granulated citrus is a little coarser. Any uh, specific uh, use in the world of barbecue? Um, I mean, you can use it in a fruit salad. Yeah, you can use it in a fruit salad atmosphere, pineapples, um, good stuff. It has dextrose in it, which is a sugar. Um, pretty much, uh, you know, anything, uh, you, anything you don't want to turn dark on you, I'd say, is what's pretty much what I would use for. It's a preservative, basically. Good stuff. Yeah, I like um, it. Hey, make sure you like us on Facebook. That's one way we uh, are spreading the word. YouTube, give a little thumbs up on the video. 
and uh, oh, good luck with that. Yeah, I already had a piece. It was pretty good. My uh, the YouTube thing has got to be going along. I mean, we are hitting YouTube like crazy, um, and I'm seeing a bunch of my friends on YouTube, but I just don't see why all you guys out there just when you watch it, give it trip a on over up. to YouTube and hit that thumbs up and uh, make that happen, and that'll bring us up. It helps us. Uh, that really does help us a lot. It helps us on iTunes too. So uh, when you get that going, we're still still trying to chase that 1,000th friend on Facebook. And you know, guys, I am all over Facebook. My Facebook page is so big right now, it moves so fast, I can't keep up with it. If all I had to do was sit at work and like watch my Facebook page go click, 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 and update, I'd have nothing else to do all day. So I got like 1,800 and some stupid odd friends. I don't know how many crazy friends I got out there, but hey, it's wonderful to see y'all. Keep those, uh, keep those um, letters and great plates rolling on in. Remember, uh, it's a crazy world we live in out there. Every chance you get, buy local, think global, stay sustainable. And every chance you get, guys, hug your mom.